James Melendez, I love this sparkling wine. This is from Scharfenberger, Mendocino County, Brute Excellence, non-vintage wine. Stay tuned and I'll tell you about this wine. Life is too good and life is too short to not enjoy sparkling wine more often. And um, at minimum, I have one glass per week. I think it's fantastic. It's a way to celebrate life and to celebrate this beautiful expression of wine. And uh, yes, definitely enjoy it during special occasions, New Year's, birthdays, anniversaries, and so forth. But definitely seek out and enjoy it once a week. Put it on your, you know, maybe uh, something you enjoy on a Sunday evening. Maybe it's a Friday afternoon after work. You're, you know, celebrating you've survived a fantastically difficult or fantastically good week. It doesn't matter. But for me, I think this is a really wonderful expression. To me, Scharfenberger represents uh, one of the nice sparkling wines when I first moved here a couple of decades ago, which is, um, seemed like it was yesterday. But it was a bottle of wine, uh, given my budget at the time, that I could afford only this particular bottle. And I would afford maybe more special bottles on more special occasions. So I look back and I've had years where I haven't tasted Scharfenberger. Now Scharfenberger has gone through a different uh, ownership change out over the years. And at one time it was called Pacific Echo. It comes back to be called Scharfenberger Cellars. And um, you know, I think that's where it lost some traction. But ultimately, I think it's a fantastic, uh, you know, good value bottle and something to enjoy frequently. Now, let me show you a little bit closer. I'll read a bit of the back panel, Scharfenberger, and it's in Philo and Mendocino County. You can visit, I have visited, and I've only visited once. So let me read a bit of the copy in the back. It just says, the history of Scharfenberger Cellars begins in the village of Philo in 1981 in the heart of California's Anderson Valley. And to me, that is a pivotal point where I think some amazing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grow to uh, be captured for this bottle and other bottles of sparkling wine and non-sparkling wines. I think it's a really handsome, beautiful, gorgeous expression. I love the Anderson Valley, and I think ultimately what comes out in the glass is a fantastic, gorgeous wine. Now this wine is 60% Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir. And um, it really definitely has that sense of Pinot Noir. It is non-vintage, so it's uh, you know following the path point of, say, the Champagnes, where a majority of those wines are non-vintage. Um, ultimately, this wine is uh, expressing nicely, you know, bottle after bottle that you open is reliability, so that's the advantage point of non-vintage. So I think that's a really, you know, great characterization of this wine. Now it's 12.5% ABV, and uh, I think it's really a phenomenal value. So, you know, this is about a $19.99 price point, a smaller production. What I mean by smaller is there's a 20,000 case production. It may sound like a large number, but ultimately in the sparkling world, uh, it really is not. And uh, I think it's one to lean on and look forward to. And when you look at, say, all the varieties or the brands of sparkling wine in California, there are really not that many brands as compared to, say, Champagne. Champagne is really that mothership of so many brands and labels. And um, that's not a, a negative comment, it's just the way it is. Uh, ultimately in California, you've had just a segment of you know specific producers over time. It is nice to look at a producer that you might not have tasted in a while or tasted at all. This is one I definitely recommend to try. Now this wine, mm, 92 points out of 100 points. So let me tell you about the scent characterization and I'll tell you about the palette in a moment. So on this, I'm getting notes of uh, green pear, a bit of beeswax notes and uh, crushed seashells. And next, the palette characterization. Great palette characterization here. A capture of green apple, a bit of passion fruit notes, uh, white floral notation, oyster shell, so that salinity notes coming through, as well as uh, dried citrus peel. Again, 92 points out of 100 points. Be sure, now this is a home guard, um, more of a tulip shaped glass, not the classic tulip shape, but I think it's a really nice way of enjoying your wine. So you get to smell the wine, you also get that bubble action that you see in the glass itself. And um, you know, there's a lot of the all purpose glasses. So people will serve sparkling wine in a burgundy glass, but ultimately I think what gets lost in that is the bubble translation and you get a lot of the scent characterization, that's great. But this is that medium point where you get a bit of that nose as well as that bubble action going on. Thank you for watching. I'll put more information on this producer down below. Questions and comments can be listed there. Thank you for watching this past decade. It's gone by rather quickly, but life is to enjoy in good and bad times. A uh, wonderful bottle of sparkling wine, a recommendation here for this wine. 
seek it out, ask your wine merchant to bring it in. Thank you for watching. Let's stay connected. So more wines to come. I do appreciate it. We'll see you in the next decade, if not sooner. Stay tuned for more something.